Syntax Objective 1 Problems Problem 1. What is the y-intercept of the line whose graph contains the given points? We hope you would remember that the y-intercept is the value of y when x equals 0. However, do we see x equals 0 here, where we would expect to find it between negative 1 and 1? No, there is no x equals 0. The numbers skip from negative 1 to 1 and then on to 2 and 3. We see that the x values and y values are one unit apart except for between negative 1 and 1 where they are 2 apart. We should recognize that for x equals 0, here inserted in red between x equals negative 1 and x equals 1, y would have to be negative 2. Also in red inserted between y equals negative 3 and y equals negative 1. So our answer will be a, negative 2. We can also go to the calculator to have us help determine the y-intercept of the line given these points. We first press the STAT key on the calculator, and this is what we get on our view screen. Then press ENTER at the lower right of the keypad. This is what you get. Make sure you have L1 and L2 available. Enter all the X values in order under L1. Then enter the respective Y values under L2. Then press the Y equals key at the upper left of the keypad. This is the function enter view. From here, you can press the up arrow once, then press enter so that plot one is highlighted. Press graph. We see the points lined up. To get a better view, we can zoom in on the data by pressing zoom, then arrow down to zoom menu choice nine, stat. Press enter. We see a much closer view then we can see where the line would fall on the y-axis at negative 2. One more thing we can do is let the calculator determine the equation of that line connecting the points by pressing STAT, then arrow once to the right for the CALC submenu, and since we're finding the equation of a line, we arrow down to choice 4, linear regression, press ENTER, press ENTER again. A equals 1 and B equals 2 mean that the equation of this line is y equals 1x plus negative 2 because a is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So it can be written as y equals x minus 2. We can go back to the function enter by pressing the y equals key at the upper left. Then we can enter our equation y equals x minus 2 and y1. The x key is highlighted on the keypad image. And finally we can press graph. And by graphing we verified our y-intercept of negative 2. Problem 2. The table shows the cost of renting rollerblades for H hours. There are some problems that will only require some mental mathematics. In other words, some simple calculations in your head is all that is required. So here you have a table that shows the cost for renting rollerblades by the hour and you are asked to choose the linear equation that best represents the table. The table shows the cost of 1, 2, 3, and 4 hour rentals. By simply replacing H in each equation with 1, 2, 3, and 4, we find that only answer choice C yields the answers that match the cost column. Be careful, if you're lazy and only try the first number 1, you would get 7.5 as an output value and may be lured into choosing it as the correct answer. Test writers often do that, give you an answer choice in answer A or B that gives you the right answer if you just try one number. It's important to try out all the input values. One great way to check your answers is with the graphing calculator. We can start by pressing the Y equals key. We can enter the equations from the answers to see which one matches the output values. Here is answer A entered in Y1. One thing we have to do here is enter the variable X instead of H. We use this key on the calculator because the calculator will not recognize any other letter as a variable in this view. From here we go to the table view by pressing the second key. We see the arrow blinking on the view screen. Then we press the graph key to get the table view. And we see that for an input of one hour the total cost is seven dollars fifty cents. Let's not go ahead and accept that as correct until we check out the other answers. But for two hours the charge from the equation in A is $15, while the actual table of charges was 
so that makes it incorrect and we cross off A. Next, we'll try answer C. We get to the table view by pressing second, then graph, and we see that all the output values match. So C is our correct answer. Problem three, Julie rode her bike to the movie theater, watched the newest movie, then rode her bike home. Which graph best depicts Julie's trip? Since the y-axis represents miles from home, and the x-axis represents hours, we can conclude that the origin, or the point that is represented by the point 0, 0, is her starting point. There are only two graphs that satisfy having the point 0, 0 as that basic requirement or starting point, so we can eliminate answer choices A and B. We also know that Julie watched the latest movie, so she had to stop for a while to watch the movie, and there's only one graph where she stops for any amount of time to do anything and that's in graph C. Therefore, C is the correct answer. How hard was the math on that one? Not hard at all. Performing math and algebra almost always starts with looking at something and thinking about what makes sense. Problem four, a tree is 42 feet tall and grows at a rate of six inches per year. Which equation expresses the height of the tree, H, as a function of the time in years, T? This is a problem again that involves the brain, common sense, thinking through the problem. The first thing we should notice here is that the height of the tree is given in feet, 42 feet. And the rate of growth is given in inches, that is six inches per year. We should know that in order to get the correct answer, we need to convert the inch feet or the feet to inches so we can have the same units. And looking at all the answers, what number is consistent throughout these answers? It's 42, as in 42 feet. If we think a little bit, we will remember that six inches per year equals one half a foot per year, so that would eliminate answers A and B. And to choose between C and D, we have to think, is it going to be 42T or one half T? If we think about what the 42t means in answer C, it means 42 feet per year, not an answer that makes sense, so we cross it off. Our correct answer has a growth rate of one half foot per year, which is six inches per year. Did we have to push a single calculator button for this one? No, we didn't. We just had to read carefully and think a little bit. Problem five, the table of values shows ordered pairs for which linear function? We have three ordered pairs, negative two, comma two, zero comma one, and four comma negative one. The first number represents the x value and the second number represents the y value. So let's start by substituting negative two for x and two for y in this equation, answer A. And since negative two plus two equals zero, we know that A is not the right answer and cross it off. We go through the same process to check answer B. And that turns out to be negative two minus two, which equals negative four. And that's not negative two, so we cross off B as well. Next, we check answer C in the same manner. And that turns out to be negative two plus two times two, which equals two. So answer C is looking good as far as a right answer. Still, we need to try out answer D. And answer D for the point is negative two minus two times two, which equals negative six. So we cross off answer D as well. So we circle our correct answer, answer C. Another way to do this is with the graphing calculator. In this problem, the graphing calculator really does nothing for you that you cannot do yourself but I will show you how to do it to avoid opportunities for mistakes or even to check your work. First, enter the value for x in the calculator, negative two, then press the storage key, which is the STO key right above the on key. It gives us the, the little right arrow, then press the X key on the keypad shown here, then press enter. Now we will store the number two for y. Enter Two, then press the storage or STO key again right above the on key 
Then we enter the letter Y by first pressing the green alpha key. There's a blinking A for alpha that shows up on the view screen. Then press the one key that accesses the letter Y above it. Then press enter. Now we can enter the answer choices. Here is the answer for C entered, X plus 2Y, press enter. Again we see that we get 2, the same thing we got earlier without the calculator, but this time using the calculator. This has been Tax Objective 1 Problems. Thanks for viewing.